Hey everybody, Final Thoughts time for Newton, which is a very sharp, very fun Euro with a ton of stuff going on. There are so many different avenues for exploration and point harvesting in this game. It's crazy. You've got this whole world to explore, but then you've got this other board where you're exploring potential inventions you can do. You can be focusing primarily on work. You can be focusing on your own studies, on deck building, and really, obviously, success is going to be all about combining two or three of those avenues to the best effect uh, because they're all really strong contenders. And they're really intertwined hugely. I mean, probably the single biggest potential for scoring points is lots of studying, lots of covering up spaces on your own bookshelf. But to be able to do all of those, those are very tightly tied together with uh, drafting the right cards to add to your deck in the deck builder sort of element, and also with uh, traveling the uh, world to hit all these specific cities that you have to go and study to make these particular breakthroughs. But if you're focusing on those things, you can't focus as much on study. If you really focus on becoming an awesome studier, you have nothing to study. But then, uh, that's okay because you can uh, make up the difference by having more money on hand because that gives you a lot of flexibility to just kind of purchase your way past the work you would have to do elsewhere. But to get a lot of money, you need to be focusing primarily on labor and working. So again, the core puzzle of how to bring all these different spokes on a wheel together to maximize your scoring potential based in large part on your masters you got as part of the draft at the beginning of the game, but also based on what you're particularly good at and based on what opportunities the boards give because they are randomly seated. And the city you really want to go to to get a particular line of studying done, they happen to be on opposite sides of the world. Ah, am I going to be able to do that? Or am I going to try and pursue some kind of benefit like more potions that lets me avoid that? really clever, and you could be deciding right up front what your ultimate goals are, because you can see the potential in-game bonus objective tiles there are that you have to get to either by traveling the world or by um, doing lots of work or by doing lots of inventing. Again, it all comes together and it's really sharp, really fun, but... I hate to say it, I like the game a lot, but my wife, Jen, had a little bit of a problem with it. And it's the exact same problem she had with Designer and Story Mangone's last game, Expo 1906, which I thought was a really great game too. But like Expo, this is a game where there's a lot of stuff you want to do. You can see it all laid out in front of you. And you want to be able to make these big, gigantic moves and set yourself up over several small moves to make the big, awesome boom! It all falls into place. You never get to do that in this game, though, because this is a game of iteration, of taking step after step after step. The fact that it doesn't matter how amazing a studier you are, if you take the study action, you can only do one action. Um, but you like, and, and, and it was very frustrating for Jen. It's like, no, if I do a big, it's cool, I maybe want to do a big study auction, or I want to do a lot of little tiny ones so I can have like a really big, impactful turn. This is not a game of big, impactful turns. Much like scientific discovery itself, uh, success in this game is built on small steps that build on top and on top and on top of each other. Again, that was the exact same thing in Expo uh, 1906, and I thought it was brilliant there. I think it's brilliant here. It's so thematically appropriate to the subject matter. I think that's really great. But Jen, for her, it she wanted more satisfaction of like those big, awesome, epic mega turns. And you might have a few situations where, okay, you can pull off something really cool because of the card you played in combination with the money that you convert into potions, the other stuff. But still, with very few exceptions, you're only ever doing one core thing every turn. And for Jen, she wanted to be able to have those big, awesome turns where, yeah, I put everything into place and then it all, I had the big mega thing. At the end result, you still get the same ultimate amount of stuff done. This is a game where you can't do everything. You have to focus, but it's those little iterative steps, those kind of baby steps that uh, found Jen wishing, I want to, you know, if she takes baby steps, she wants them to build up to some big uber step. Here it never builds up to an uber step. It's just kind of this amalgamation of the actions you do over the course of the game that ultimately translate into how many points you scored at the end of the game. And again, for me, I think it worked great, but if you're a player who really thrives on those big epic mega turns, 
Like I said, they might be few and far between here, so that's something to know going in. It's not a reflection of the quality of the design. The design is stellar. Nestori and his design partner, Simone Luciani, who you might recognize his name from Zolk and the Mayan Calendar and uh, Voyages of Marco Polo and Lorenzo Il Magnifico, uh, they working together, have made an, a very sharp game with so many cool, interesting paths to victory and so much setup variability because plotting the right path right from the get-go is a combination of figuring out which of my masters that I drafted for am I actually going to get into play? How am I going to get them into play? Because there's only a few ways to do it. I mean, I guess, in theory, you could get all four into play if you did everything. If you built, if you did nine study actions over the course of the game and you traveled all the way down to Sicily and you uh, mastered the labor track and you mastered um, one wing of the research track, I guess you could pull that off. I don't see how you could do that though with just the 30 turns you actually have. You know, six rounds plus five turns a game. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. So it really is. Right. These are the two I think I'm going to play this turn. And I'm going to play it because with these blue books, that means I'm really going to focus on studying this top row, which means I never really need to master big studying. I need to have lots of little study actions, but only six over the course of the game. But the sooner I do it, the sooner I start uh, cashing that in. But the books aren't going to be enough. Um, I, I, I means I'm going to need to get to, to three and four. And oh my gosh, they're on the opposite side of the world. How am I going to do that? Oh, but if I fa uh, if I plan the path between these two, like I said, right from the get-go, you could be making very deep, intricate, long-term plans and also really important short-term plans because it's everything you do is built upon the, um, the, the shoulders of what you have done prior. Again, appropriate to the subject matter, makes for a sharp game, but it's a, it has a certain feel that might not work for everybody. Like I said, my wife, she just wanted more of those big turns. Now, I kind of wish, like I said, it's maybe it's possible, but it seems pretty far-fetched to get all four of these into the game. And in fact, if you get all four of these into the game, that's probably the main thing you were trying to do above anything else. You're just trying to say, I got them all into play. I've, 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 I've mastered all the masters. I kind of wish maybe as an additional part of setup, hey, it's really cool that I get this one little nod in a particular direction. I am stronger in studying or lessons or movement or technology than anybody else because that's what my board says. It'd be really cool. After we're done with the draft, maybe, I don't know, maybe randomly or maybe I get to pick one of my masters to be in play right from the get-go because that would just give me a little bit of a leg up. And okay, right off the bat, I got these. Right, I um, it, it would kind of kickstart the game a little bit. I think maybe that would have helped uh, supplement Jen's need for like, you know, velocity. Because this is a game where over a short period of time you get a lot of stuff done, but you never feel like it speeds up. You're always kind of moving at the same pace. And I guess maybe that's another way of saying the same thing, why it didn't work for Jen. For me, it worked great. I would love to play this game more and plumb its depths because there is a lot to learn here. A lot of different ways to go. The cards that come out, the specialties you've got, really sharp, fun stuff. But you just got to know going in, um, if you're a certain type of Euro player that's looking for a certain type of experience, Newton might not give it to you. Uh, but really, folks, don't take my word for it. Watch the run-through and decide for yourself. Like I always say, I'm just some schlub with a camera playing games with his wife. I'm just one little opinion point in a whole sea of internet opinions. Everybody's got one, right? Um, that's why I film the way I do. So you can watch the run-through and see if it looks like fun. The decisions you have to make, the uh, compromises, the cost-benefit uh, analyses you have to make. If it looks like fun, give it a try. I think it's great. My wife was looking for something a little bit different. That is Newton. And thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Not bye-bye yet. I just have one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, I, I, I think I... I uh, just uh, threw out the fact that I really love the thematic notion that the actions you're doing in this game have real-world parallels to the the idea of scientific research. And, you know, again, you, you, you build off of minor steps until you get to something big. That's, that's great. I love that. So while I like that thematic integration, I do think the game missed a few tricks. Uh, specifically because, well, um, mostly because I would have loved these tokens and these tokens and these tokens, just to have down at the bottom of them, in you know, in tiny little font, something like what all of these spaces have. Actual scientific breakthroughs that you make. Like, um, oh my gosh, they're so small, I can barely read them. Uh, uh, Lucius Spectum and uh, 
uh, Modus Legus, and oh yeah, I mean they're so they're, arguably they're too small to read. Plus they're in Latin, so fair enough, they're going to be tough. But I love the fact that they're there because it helps sell the notion of or what did I do when I completed this row or this column? Oh, I okay, I, I've developed some information about magnetism or um, probabilistic science. Uh, which is uh, probable literes or something like that. So I, I like that it helps bring the uh, you know the, the the simulation more to life. And the fact that these tokens are called inventions and they immediately do stuff for you. It's a shame that the developers did not actually put little descriptions of what they are too, just to help the subject matter come to life. If I go to Istanbul and I get another student, why? What was it about that? Just a little bit of Latin text for flavor. And plus, the beautiful thing is if it's Latin, you don't have to translate it. Nope, they didn't bother translating all this Latin. If they'd done that for the rest of the stuff, it's a minor thing, but I think it could have helped the theme come alive a little bit more if you can see, all right, what happened when I went to Marseille? Why did I get these potions? Oh, and by the way, rule book, come on. Um, you know, the most common complaint I have about modern designer Euro style rule books are the, the unfortunate a tendency for developers to front load all the information before you've explained the structure of the game. Fortunately, the rules didn't fall into that trap, but they did fall into another trap. Not giving thematic explanations for the actions you take in game. Yes, there are uh, there's some because you know the actions have names: work, technology, travel, lesson, study, and Joker. But come on, I mean, make Joker a little bit more thematic. Um, you know, multi multidisciplinary multi studies or something like that. And um, oh, uh, but yo, know, what are these potions? What are these? I don't know. How is it that they magically let you skip knowledge or locations? Uh, again, if. The uh, you know the only flavor text in this whole book is this first paragraph right here. Throwing a little bit of flavor text in here and there to explain thematically why these mechanisms work the way they do. Because I believe they could. I bet you if I ever met Nestori or Simone or anybody uh, who was involved in the development of this game, I could ask, right, what do the potions mean? And they would have some thematic justification for why they are this crazy wild card that stands in for knowledge. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe they are literally. Maybe they're originally supposed to be knowledge, and they. We're going to do that, but you know, they didn't work well with the printer, and so they made them potions instead. I don't really know. It's a shame because I think some people will complain that the game is is themeless, and I don't think that's fair because again, the core structure of this gameplay is so thematically appropriate to the the subject matter that's being conveyed in this simulation. They could have done a little bit more just with a little bit of extra flavor text to make all of these actions you do. I mean, I understand why. Maybe you could argue, well, I think, arguably, the study action, getting books onto this bookshelf, is probably the most important element you can do in the game, no matter what. So when you're going to have to, you're going to have to combine that with other stuff. Probably. I, I've only played the game a bit, but I get that, that sense that this is very important. And so that's why, oh, these are all the things that actually have scientific names, the, the actions. Still. I would have very much appreciated this. Uh, I get a potion in three movement. Why? What is the scientific breakthrough here? Or, you know, the mechanical breakthrough or the logistics breakthrough, whatever it would be. A little bit of extra love and attention to theme would have helped Newton, I think, would have elevated the experience and pulled more players in, um, you know, and, and captured the imagination more. A minor complaint, uh, because hey, it is a Euro at the end of the day. It is about pushing cubes and little uh, meeples around the board. But still, it's just one that bugs me when games are so close and they just don't do that extra little bit of legwork. Uh, but anyway, folks, now I am done talking about Newton. Very neat shark game. And uh, thanks once again for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.